if you already seen some parts of this video in my previous videos, skip this video in this case. Also in the description box you can find other videos with links. So check it out, they can be absolutely helpful. I'm gonna show you a project, a couple of compressors, and I'm gonna show you one thing. I would say a majority of my viewers never seen before about compression. Also, I'm gonna show you the proof. You know, we're gonna learn audio waveform, what exactly compressor does. Also, it will be shootout between 11 and 76 compressors. This time, I also gonna prove they all sound different. And what's the difference exactly between plugins, you're also gonna learn. We're gonna work with SSL cell channel compressor. Hi guys, nice to see you. My name is Andrew Zeleno. I'm a professional audio engineer with more than 10 years of working in professional audio production industry. Last five years I'm a teacher for really unique mixing production course online. It's in Skype, nine months full fat top end course check it out can be really helpful just because of right now we covering topic called how many decibels you can allow yourself a song dedicated to this topic so check this song waves you what you do in my mix is i not for you to ruin how many decibels to allow myself seriously rigs came out not to laugh about waves you what you do in my mix is i not for you to ruin how many decibels to allow myself seriously rigs came out not to laugh about right <laughs> so over here you can see the same compressor called 1176 so right now i'm gonna play a track called santa monica by theory of a dead man one of the greatest reference tracks i used ever it's pretty unbeatable i tried so many different audio engineers and so many different songs this song just has so transparent sound and so rich it's not sharp but at the same time really really bright and really really rich harmonics in sound of this song so our mix actually not mixed fully but it's like pre-mixing but i believe it sounds really cool even comparing to this the greatest song ever so let me show you santa monica he fills my bed with gasoline you think i would have noticed waves you ready what you do in my mix is i not for you to ruin you think i would have noticed waves you ready what you do in my mix is i not for you to ruin so i mean you know <laughs> it's still not the same but it's really close if you compare your mix to this santa monica track i mean chances that you're gonna do at least like this you know pretty goes to zero anyway who knows right i repeat it just pre-mixing it's not full mix on i didn't even do automation that's it comparison between 11 and 76 native instruments slash soft tube it's amazing company, Softube company, in my opinion, one of the greatest plugin manufacturers nowadays. Uh, as you can see, I have a Softube uh, controller. It's 1176 made by Softube for uh, native instruments uh, bundle. They are supposed to be pretty similar compressors. Of course, uh, you shouldn't be so trusty believer. You know, every plugin manufacturer anyway created their own product. You know, don't think they all 1176s. First of all, they are waves, they are soft tube, they are universal audio, and so on. First of all, they have nuances of this exact plugin manufacturers, and you easily can hear it. Over here, this two compressor sounds really, really different. But right now, you're gonna learn one important thing about compressors. It's called VU meter. You know, arrow in analog devices can be really fast moving but sometimes really slow moving basically it's like inertia you know it's like how fast arrow reacts on uh, gain reduction changes in this case we have totally two different plugins for example uh, let's check soft tube first right now only lower one works notice how slow arrow goes in the lower compressor waves you any what you do in my mix is i not for you to ruin how for example, when I say how many decibels, I, I say loud word how. In this case, arrow just doesn't have time to show you 10, 12 decibels of compression. So it kind of tries to kind of run uh, up to that mark. You know, arrow thinks like this. Okay, I need to show 12 decibels, but you know, I try, but I so slow. Oh my God, already next word. Okay, I'm not gonna go to 
12 decibels and only shows you something like maybe 7 decibels of compression. So soft tube arrow in this comp in this plugin just shows you much less amount of compression. I have pretty sensitive ear and because of that I really instantly clearly can hear like more compression or less compression no matter what kind of results plugin shows me. And I instantly hear a lower compressor in reality it compresses some in around 10 decibels of compression actually so more than it shows us second compressor which is uh, waves uh, 11u76 version uh, this compressor shows us more real amount of compression because this arrow is really really fast waves UAD, what you do in my next sign up now uh, this arrow shows us pretty similar amount of compression and it's illusion, because in reality, right now, lower compressor compresses more than higher one. Uh, you can notice it by your ear if you have pretty sensitive ear. Uh, on our course, uh, by the way, we train ability to hear, uh, doing a lot of tests. We have these topics when we compare all possible plugins related to some classic model. You know, EQs, compressors, so we learned basically like 50 different compressors during the course. We learned like pretty 70 different equalizer plugins, you know. So after a while with practicing, you're gonna hear all these little nuances. So our students pretty can recognize, you know, difference between sound of universal audio plugin, waves plugin, soft U plugin. Notice how more packed and more kind of smooth, really kind of compressed lower compressor sounds. Right now it's this one. Waves, UAD, what you do? Waves, higher one, doesn't, doesn't control dynamics that well. Waves, UAD, what you do? And again, problem with word what. Waves, UAD, what you do in? Right, I, I say what and it's kind of really sounds like spiky because it's louder than other words. While in lower compressor, uh, you know, it's enough amount of decibels of compression to really even out those phrases. So to prove my statement, what I do, uh, I change settings for the higher compressor for the waves. And as you can see, I push input level right now to make more compression. Uh, look at the arrow, how many decibels right now it compresses. Waves UAD, what you do it? Waves UAD, what you do it? Like 10 or a little bit more than 10, you know, maybe up to 12 decibels of compression. You're not gonna hear so kind of emphasized sound D or, you know, what you, it will be still under control. Waves UAD, what you do in my mix? Waves UAD, what you do in my mix? They will be sounding now really similar in terms of how they control dynamics. Waves UAD, what you do in my mix? Sign up for you to ruin. What you do in my mix is sign up for you to ruin Waves UAD, what you do in my mix is sign up for you to ruin Waves UAD, what you do in my mix is sign up for you to ruin See, of course there is some sound, because those plugins sound just different, you know. Soft U, for example, has much more bottom end. This compressor doesn't make your sound so tight like Waves one. Waves plugin like sounds thinner, like smaller, doesn't have so big bottom end. In this case, as you can see, we finally even out these two compressors with each other. Just imagine right now what regular person does with these two plugins. If person really realize that arrow should show you the same amount of compression, you would set up both compressors to show, let's say, 7 dB or 10 dB both. But just because of arrow in the lower compressor slower, you need to really kind of compensate this difference with your eye and with your ear. And how many people, you know, just few people. So that's why it's so important to really understand your tool you apply for your music. Okay, we got it, let's go further. It's an 808 drum machine, and we're gonna be comparing three 11 and 76 models. Two of them will be already familiar for us, so is these two. And uh, lower one will be Universal Audio 11 and 76, pretty known plugin, you all know this. So they set up similar, you know, the longest attack, the shortest release. What I do, I try to compress with the same amount of decibels. If you don't believe in this theory, like how fast arrow reacts on your sound, uh, we can set up arrows at this kind of with the same amount of compression. So waves compressed by between five and six. Universal audio. Also a little bit more than five or around five. And soft tube. Also around 5. Let's check waveforms of results. So original waveform looked like this. So first punch 
it's pretty low. It's a transient, it's a click of this kick. It's like uh, articulation of a kick in a busy mix. And right now it's not emphasized too much. Uh, tail, kind of increase volume a little bit and then slowly go down. So it has pretty long tail. After we apply compressor with longest attack possible, we emphasize this initial punch, initial click. And that's why over here you can see this impulse. It looks much louder than other peaks. In this case, this compressor emphasizes punch. That's why drum sounds like more articulated, more punchy in a mix. You can see pretty similar waveform of waves. You know, it's a punch and then kind of slowly going down tail. And the same going on over here in universal audio result. You know, it's also kind of pretty slowly go down. Right, so I compressed a little bit like less, maybe one dB less with the universal audio. That's why click relatively kind of not so loud comparing to other peaks. We have pretty similar result in terms of tail. Notice pretty the same amplitude of peaks between first one and third one. But over here, notice what happened with soft tube. It's totally different result. Over here, we, we see pretty loud punch, pretty loud click, but we have much, much quieter peaks afterwards, after this peak, comparing to first impulse, much lower peaks. What it proves? It proves we compressed more with soft tube. You know, uh, so Arrow showed us bullshit because uh, Arrow just was so slow to really show you amount of compression. Distance between this first peak and the second peak, they are not so far away. And over here also not so far away. But in soft tube, it means you emphasize click much more and squeeze tail of uh, kick much more. So it's not five decibels, it's much more. Soft tube compresses more with the same amount of indication. Secondly, in this case, you also can notice how differently peaks go down after we start to compress. In this case, you can see that peaks not so fast going down. They don't look like they try to be quieter and quieter and quieter. Only after some period of time, they really start to go down. While in waves waveform, it's pretty obvious, noticeable, like every next peak over here will be quieter and quieter. And in universal audio waveform over here, is the same, quieter and quieter. If you put a cursor of uh, DAW somewhere here, look at the cursor, you can see that Waves waveform after Waves plugin has a so kind of low amplitude and the same pretty low amplitude in universal audio, but it's much higher amplitude in soft tube. That's why you hear much more growling tail. So it just proves uh, we have much more compression in a soft tube with the same amount uh, of indications. Let me show you how I can compensate it. So with universal audio, I'm gonna push more than just five decibels, let's say I increase input. And arrow shows us right now almost like 20 decibels. And suddenly you hear this kind of growl in tail. You hear this like, boo. Pretty similar what we have with soft tube. Universal audio just doesn't have this kind of bottom end, you know, it's like more tighter sounding compressor. So right now on the screen you can see fourth waveform, this one. In this case, you can compare soft tube, this one, and this one. And finally, let me put it close to it. Right now we're gonna have this green. They look like much closer to each other. You can see amplitude of those peaks pretty the same, you know, so they don't go down so quickly. Over here you can see pretty similar amplitude, right? So tail kind of so long and the kind of behavior of the tail right now is really, really similar. So if you want to achieve this sort of long tail, prolonged tail, you should set up like more than 10 decibels using plugin like Universal Audio 1176. So basically this is the proof uh, you should believe in your ears, not in your eyes, right? Because eyes show you 5 dB, but they behave totally different. But if you compensate it correctly, as you can see, they look very, very similar. That's it. We're gonna work with uh, SSL channel compressor. Every channel of SSL console has this amazing compressor based on DBX circuitry, and it's amazing VCA compressor working 
great, especially known for drums. And today I'm gonna show you what Softube company did in this Softube console one controller. So wait for it during this video, you're gonna see a lot of examples and I even gonna show you waveforms to prove why I say this or that. Let me show you, for example, over here we're gonna be considering three plugins. It will be Universal Audio Channel Strip, we're gonna consider Waves, SSL Channel Strip, and also we're gonna be considering this, as you can see I have Softube Console 1 controller, amazing product from one of the best plugin manufacturers. I have over here SSL analog equalizers and compressors and I can say, you know, all these three products not so far away from real deal. Real deal of course sounds a little bit different. I hope you are not so believer like software is like totally the same like analog, of course they are not. But you know, plugins amazing. These three, they all have pros and cons. This punch for drums, you know, click like punchy, clicky sounding snare or kick will be achieved only in case if you use slow attack on this compressor. In reality, this compressor has automatic attack. But for drums, a compressor understands it's something around like 30 milliseconds. The problem is, if you compare these three, we're gonna be using snare with pretty long tail, you know, like ambient tail of the snare. And over here, as you can see, I use Universal Audio SSL channel strip. So we compress uh, around like 3.6 to 1 ratio. We're gonna be using 100 milliseconds on all three compressors. The same ratio, the same amount of decibels. So let me show you how I set up threshold. I rotate threshold knob over here. I rotate even more. And finally, I have the slide. So I mean, I can go further with threshold, but it still will be showing me 3 dB. You know, but it doesn't mean it's really 3 dB, it's already can be, you know, like 4 dB, 4.5, because as you can see, it's not perfect gain reduction meter, because it shows you only 3 or 6, right? So I try to rotate threshold the least amount, but to have 3 dB, let's compare how they sound. First one. Second one, waves. So both sound really tight. Actually, it's one of my favorite SSL-based plugin, right? So over here it's 30 milliseconds. I use the same settings. Uh, 0.1 second means 100 milliseconds release. We have threshold. I don't use parallel compression. And I make sure that I compress this by 6 dB. Now I'm gonna be playing final results and I'm gonna be showing you waveform. In this case, as you can see, I did pretty crazy proper test. It's a universal audio SSL. So over here, uh, let's consider this first a couple of impulses as a transient. Then we pretty quickly go down with peaks. There is pretty upper mid-range information. That's why waveform is so short and so consistent here. Uh, and then you have tail. That's it. As you can see, second waveform, which is waves. So universal audio, waves, sounds really, really close. And waveform looks really, really similar. You know, exactly the same kind of steep curves, how quickly it goes down, the same kind of length, the same amplitude of a tail. So right now I highlighted over here track number three. And this is a SSL console one with 20 milliseconds of attack. If I gonna set up attack like, you know, three, five, 10 milliseconds, it will be not enough not to touch like initial punch and then you squeeze tail. In this case, drum will not be punchy. So I start with 20 milliseconds. And this is the result of console one. Let's compare, let's say against waves. As you can see, it's a totally different sound. Softube sounds like more open. It sounds much brighter, much noisier tail. Tail doesn't sound like compressed enough, you know, it's like more prolonged. So we don't have enough punch and we have pretty loud tail. So in this case, it seems like we have too short attack, you know, because we start to compress too quickly. Uh, your compressor kind of slips. So, uh, you know, like peak appears for the compressor. Compressor kind of screams, oh my God, we need to compress it instantly. But you as a master of a compressor, you say, no, wait a second, wait, wait for 20 milliseconds kind of, and then wake up and start to work. 
and compressor like a dog on a leash. And after 20 milliseconds, you unleash your dog and dog just like chasing after a person. So the same going on with the compressor. Even based on the waveform, you can see that this part much louder comparing to other two compressors. That's why it sounds like that. So in spite of the fact we still kind of have pretty loud attack, right? We don't kind of experience tail more squeezed, more compressed. You can think maybe, who knows, let's experiment. Maybe let's try to try different settings. Maybe it's not like 20 milliseconds. Maybe it should be like 7 milliseconds, maybe 3, maybe 12. So this is 7 milliseconds over here. As you can see, situation even worse. You have even a louder tail and much prolonged, much more noticeable tail like this. It sounds not punchy, it's a 3 milliseconds. Again, let me play waves, how tight and punchy it sounds. And soft tube console one sounds like super noisy, by the way, compared with analog one. So I feel the same. That soft tube just doesn't sound right in this case. Main problem, you need to have longer attack. So the only proper attack to emulate long attack of a SSL channel compressor is 30 milliseconds. So only if you go with 30 milliseconds, this one, so third track now it's 30 milliseconds, right? So now finally you can see more or less similar results. So we have a uh, punch, pretty loud punch. They still don't look exactly the same like waves in Universal Audio. Waves. Console 1. So right now it's much, much closer to real deal, but the problem is it still has a little bit more pronounced tail, you know, so because of more pronounced tail, you don't feel this punchy tight attack of a drum. Honestly speaking, in the mix, I experience the same problem because sometimes I prefer waves and universal audio over uh, console one in this case, if I even set up like that. And I found a solution. Finally, now for all users of Softube console one, I'm going to show you real settings how you should set up uh, console one SSL 4000 uh, compressor, channel compressor to really, really be like real SSL uh, channel compressor. Okay, so in this case, you also can say, wait a second, maybe the problem is in amount of compression. Maybe it's just a question about like, maybe Softube just shows you like 6 dB of compression. Uh, but in reality, it's only like 4 dB of compression. Maybe you just need to compress a little bit more or less and it will be similar. And it's not. Over here, I also have these examples. Now you can see two files, this one and this one, and they uh, accordingly 8 decibels of compression and 4. 4 instantly doesn't work. Let's compare against waves. Cancel 1. Much longer tail, much noisier tail, less punch. You can even see based on waveform. Now I put this track closer to waves, these two. Check it out. These parts much quieter and these parts in console one much louder. It's definitely not 4 dB of compression. Second thing you can say, maybe it's 8 decibels of compression. Maybe we need to compress a little bit more with soft tube. And it's also not like that. So right now you can see these two waveforms. And with 8 decibels of compression, you can see much more squeezed tail. It's much more under compression and it definitely sounds even punchier. Let me show you. Waves. It's like gunshot, you know, so sounds like really punchy. Much punchier than waves or Universal Audio. Why I compare all the time with Waze? Because Universal Audio and Waze are pretty similar, so I can choose any of these two. And the secret is... You can see White Crow in my studio, it's my computer keyboard, right? It looks like almost yellow. Actually, it's a vintage keyboard, you know? This keyboard is like almost 20 years old. It's so old keyboard, I use it all the time. And why I use it? Because it sounds vintage, you know? I even have a tube over here. I put it on a keyboard and it sounds like, you know, saturated. It's a joke, of course. I hope you understood. <laughs> uh, because sometimes people don't understand that. <laughs> and the secret is you need to adjust release as well. You know, when a compressor has automatic out release or automatic attack, 
this compressor starts to behave a little bit differently because of that uh, you also can adjust a little bit release so you should set up something between 150 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds on a soft u plugin in this case it will be totally the same like waves or universal audio let me show you for example let me compare let's say with universal audio because i compared all the time with waves so universal audio soft tube And finally, Universal Audio sounds really, really similar to SoftTube. So, final conclusion is next. You can write down somewhere, not to forget about that. If you want SoftTube Console 1 channel SSL compressor of 4000 series, you need to set up 30 milliseconds attack and 200 or 150, 170 milliseconds of release. In this case, uh, compressing with the same amount of decibels, like 6 dB, let's say, you're gonna have pretty similar sound to Universal Audio or Waves. And finally, your soft tube SSL compressor will be sounding really, really similar to original SSL channel compressor. Just imagine you find the course uh, which can beat uh, educational programs of the best universities, like, let's say, Berkeley. I got students uh, from Berkeley, they said my course is better. What other schools don't do, they don't allow you to work on your own projects and nobody checks your projects in the real time, you know, so they just give you some projects with settings and you learn how it was made, but nobody shows you how they were struggling to achieve those perfect settings. In our cases, we not only check your homeworks in real time, but also I show you how I struggle, how I think, how I make decisions. And the most important, we not just check projects, we compare with reference tracks. We got the best songs ever from, let's say, Chris Lord LG, one of the greatest audio engineers in the history, to bring your mixes at the same level. And you can check even reviews on my channel, you can find video with reviews, and you can see how people amazed with this course. So you can save 10 years. I'm known for ability to teach, so it's pretty clear, it's suitable even for beginners and professionals who want to bring levels higher. It's pretty affordable course, you know, relatively comparing to kind of other known production schools. Let's say it's better course with much more reasonable price. So check it out, it can be absolutely amazing kind of treasure you found suddenly on the internet. Subscribe to the channel. For the course, just go to the website. There is the description. You can see some video examples over there. Thank you.